Hello everyone, my name is Jonathan Harris, and today we are going to be continuing the Build Your Own Library series. Today we're going to be looking at slow servos, or variable speed servos. They're very useful for botball and can be used in a matter of situations. And the code that we're going to look at to complete this is going to be very beneficial and can be applied to many other aspects of botball programming. So, a variable speed servo is not actually one continuous servo movement. It's going to be a bunch of smaller servo movements with a stall in between each one of them. That's what adds the, the change in speed, is how much we stall in between each one. At least for the first version that we're going to do here. All of these smaller movements are chained together to make it look like one continuous movement. I'm going to go ahead and set up a new function that we can add to our list of functions here. We're going to start with void and instead um, we're just going to call this one servo close that off and we are going to enter some parameters here now the way I've always done it is I've gone port then position then I have done speed now I can't type today we'll talk about how to make this speed and the speed could also be a float depending on how you want to implement yours because um, I'm hoping that everyone is going to be able to make a slightly different and unique version that works for their purposes. The first thing we're going to do here is we're going to do a little bit of housekeeping and just say int. We're going to call this servo position. And this is going to be equal to get servo position. And then the port we are looking for, like that. This servo position variable is what we are going to be incrementing. And then we are going to be setting the servo to this increment, or to this new value that's going to be incremented over and over again. Since we need a bunch of increments of something happening over and over and over again, that's going to be a loop. And since we want to complete until something occurs, that means it's going to be a while loop. So we can go ahead and say while servo position, our variable right above, is not equal to the position we desire, then we are going to loop over our code. This is what we're going to start with. We will come back and change some things about that later as we flesh out the rest of our function. But we want to come into here. So we're going to just basically be writing some if statements. So we're going to try to think about where our servo is at according and then putting that relative to where we want our servo to be. We can go ahead and say, if the servo position, the, the current position of the servo is greater than position, and position here is just what they are putting into the function, it is the desired position or the end goal for what we are looking for here. So if the servo position is greater than the position we want to go to, then we are going to say servo position minus equals, we're going to start with 1. Then we can say if servo position is less than position, then we want to say servo position plus equals 1. Now we could write this as an if else statement. So we can say if servo position is greater than position, else do this but that would include that would also include the case where servo position is equal to position so if we were to write this as an else then if it was not greater than then it would do this which would include being equal to so even when we're equal to we don't want it to decrease this is a small little case that doesn't really matter but um, it just is a little bit easier to read this way and it makes technically more sense even though it wouldn't actually make much of a difference. So now we're gonna add in that uh, stall we were talking about. We want that stall to actually not be five in this case, but we actually want it to be speed. At least for this very simple version that we're making at the start, we want it to be speed. This is how we're going to change the speed of the slow servo. That's why it's a variable. And so now if we were to increase speed, the moment we, the, the, the amount we stall on each loop of the iteration is 
increase. Then after this, all we have to do is say set well, actually this serve position command should be above the M sleep. So we're gonna put that here. And now we can say servo position. And then we are going to say the port and the position we want it to go to, which is servo pose. I can't type today. Like that. And once we have the position, set servo position, and our stall here, we can actually come down and say enable servos. To use the servos, you always have to enable them. Usually you want this at the beginning of your main. Um, there are instances where you could do it differently and you could maybe have it inside of a function or there are even instances where you can just say enable servo and then the port that you want to enable. So we can actually do that here in this case. Um, and then we can say servo, our port, which is zero, our position, which we have up here. We'll just say uh, 2000 and the speed, let's go ahead and set to Let's say we'll give it a three millisecond delay in between each one. Now, we could also say, well, we'll just go ahead and add in another one here that balances it back between these two values. And then we want to make sure we disable the servo afterwards. And we can go ahead and run that. I'll hold it up to the, to the camera. I could record this over later, but I will show it now. And I will run that servo. And you can see our servo is moving very slowly. There it goes. So it's going to spin, and then it's going to spin back the other way, just like that. So that's technically a slow servo. That's all you need. And if you want to change the speed on that, you could also say uh, one. And since the delay would be smaller, we can go ahead and compile that. And if we run that again, it gives us an even slower servo. So that's pretty cool. Well, you might be saying, whoa, whoa, whoa that's a pause of one. What happens if I do a pause of zero? Well, if you add in a pause of zero, you'll see that it moves very fast. And that's where we actually run into some problems. And that's going to be dealing with the way that we're actually writing the function here. So we are having an arbitrary variable set the servo position we are increasing that arbitrary variable and the servo is being set to that position and then we sleep but if we're not adding in an m sleep this is go this while loop is going to run extraordinarily fast it's going to do it faster than our servo can move to the new position that it is going to be telling it to go to. So the servo is actually going to lag behind quite a bit here. And by the time the function is over, the servo hasn't reached its destination. But oh, we're going to move on to the next function. And we are going to do this and do it in the opposite direction. So instead of getting possible full movement we're supposed to be getting, we could only be bouncing back and forth into that region. There are a couple things we want to change with this. We want it to go to the speed no matter what it's supposed to be set to. Well, one way we can fix that is just by saying no matter what, where you are at the end, even if you're not fully there yet because of the loop going too fast, go ahead and just set servo position to that end destination that we want and give it some extra time to catch up. Another issue that makes this function imperfect at the moment is that uh, there's a huge difference between a speed of one and a speed of zero. You might want more of a difference than that. So instead, it might be better if we had our speed based off of something else. Instead of writing our function like this, we're going to write our function quite differently. But if this is all you need, go right ahead, be done with the tutorial, take your code, and be on your merry way. But if you would like to change it up a little bit, then you might want to stick around. So instead 
of speed being based off of a sleep time in a loop like this? What if speed was instead based off of time? And speed was actually something that was a way or a, a, a time limit for the servo to complete something. We could say, oh, I want the, so if you were to say a speed of one, then it completes in one second. If I say a speed of two, it completes in two seconds. Well, not only would that be more practical and allow us to predict what the bot is doing much better, um, it makes our servo functions a little bit more foolproof. We are now going to write a new function with servo speed based on time. So the first thing we wanna do is we want to say, we're gonna define a float, call it starting or start time. We'll set that equal to seconds. Seconds, I believe, is the amount of seconds since a certain date and time, but it also measures in milliseconds, so it is applicable for what we are trying to do. The decimals are in milliseconds. We're going to say, while uh, seconds minus start time, so that means how much time has elapsed since we started this function? Because seconds is going to keep increasing, whereas start time doesn't. On the very first loop, seconds is equal to start time. So this is basically the same thing as saying seconds minus seconds, we're getting zero. Next time we go through this while loop, seconds has increased, start time hasn't. We're starting to see a discrepancy here and we can actually see that the amount of time is increasing. So this is going to be getting bigger. So we want to say while seconds minus start time is less than speed, we're going to move our servo. So the way I like to do this is a little bit unorthodox. Once we have our start time uh, and is equal to seconds and we know we are going to be ramping up, I'm actually going to come here. I'm going to define two more variables. Um, we're going to say int start position, which is going to be equal to get servo position and then the port. And then we're going to say int position difference, right? We're going to set this equal to the final position minus our start position. And we do this because it's going to give us the, 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 the direction that we want to travel. If position is greater than start position, let's go and subtract, but it's still gonna give us a positive direction. If position is less than start position, we're going to be subtracting, we're going to get a negative number. We need to know, we know we need to reduce what we are going after. So then what I'm going to come down here to write another variable. This variable is going to range from zero to one. Um, at the start of the function, it's going to be zero. At the end of the function, it's going to be one because it is based off of time. So it's going to look like this. Seconds minus start time over speed. Let me explain this. Seconds minus start time is just time since this loop started. Speed is how long we want it to take. At the first loop, it's gonna be zero. Zero over any number is zero. Well, at the end of our loop, speed is this number is going to be nearing speed so we want it to be equal to one so in this case at the end speed over speed is one then we're going to get a range of values when this is half of speed we'll get 0 0.5 over one is a half so this number ramps and is a floating point in between oh speaking of which we need to change this to be a float the speed can now doesn't have to be zero, one, two, or three. It can be anywhere in between. So now we have a number that is going to be going from zero to one. We can use that and multiply it to a number to get its percentage. So if position difference is the total distance we want to travel, well, we can really say that. So we can say set servo position is equal to, and we're going to set the port, and then we're going to say start position plus position difference. 
that's going to get us to our in position. But we want this to happen over time, so we're going to use our, whoops. We're going to multiply this to our position modifier. So the first time through, we want position difference to be zero. The next time through, we want position difference to be the total distance we need to travel multiplied by 0 0.001. And every time we go through this loop, we're going it's going to be added to itself more and more. And of course, I didn't add an equal sign. So now that we got that fixed, we can now see that we are going to take our start position and we are going to add a number multiplied by a number that is increasing by a small amount each time. So basically we're saying each time, start this position and add a little bit each time you go through. That's all this is really doing. We're taking our position difference and multiplying it by a number that is slowly increasing. Um, I hope I'm not just talking out of my butt and this is actually making sense to people. So if we want to pick 0.2 seconds, we change this, I don't know, we change the flow. And now we can add in decimals. And now if we want to take 0.2 seconds, we can make it make 0.2 seconds. If we want it to take five seconds for each of these to complete, we can make it take five seconds for it to complete. And that is the gist of the entire servo function now based on speed. We can go ahead and re-add in our insurance policy down here where we're going to go ahead and set servo uh, position to our end position and then give it some M sleep time to catch up. So we're going to say 50 on that. There we have a completed slow servo function. Uh, that's all I'm going to be covering in this tutorial, but I do have a next step for you guys. Shout out to Braden McDorman for introducing me and the rest of the Bob Ball community to this website, where it shows how to make a nonlinear function or an ease in and out of a, a graph. And you can use these to make your servo, if you were to implement some of these at easings.net, uh, specifically, I think I use the ease in and out cubic. Um, if you are to come in and look at this and take the code, obviously this is not in C, but you could implement it in your own language. You could find an easings over the graph that is going to make your servo not move in a linear pattern, but speed up and slow down in a very nice and smooth way. I obviously don't want to give you the code. I want you to try to figure that out yourself on how to implement these easings, but I do have it implemented in my library so I can at least demonstrate what that looks like, maybe to the camera. Maybe you can hear it better, but it's definitely starting at a certain speed and is slowly ramping up and slowing back down. It makes finessing onto specific objects on the board much easier. And all around just gives the bot a very nice aesthetic. We also use that same exact servo function in our fall competition runs and you can see the servo slowly easing in and out. So if you wanna go check that out as well, you can see a more of a demonstration there. But that is all I have for you guys today. I hope this was helpful. If I was unclear about anything, please let me know. I will more than gladly spend time personally explaining it to you. I try to ex help as many people on the Discord as I can. Um, if you have any other questions in general, I'm more than happy to help with those as well. But I hope you have a great day and good luck in this spring 2023 season. I hope everyone has some excellent robots.